Hello, it's a very lovely good evening from here in Delhi and hope that each one of you as always are absolutely absolutely fine. So now in this particular session as you can see on your screens we are going to actually start a very formidable accounting standard. That is India S21 of course it happens to deal with the effects of changes in foreign exchange rates no doubt about that. Besides this particular accounting standard as you can see on your screens once again corresponding to international accounting standard 21 and of course it also corresponds to the Indian gap that is existing accounting standard 11. Now as far as AS 11 is concerned you have already gone through it correct no doubt about that wherein you actually use uh, saw how the issues related to effects of changes in foreign exchange rates are basically addressed but as far as this particular India's India's 21 is concerned I must confess it is not easy it is not what we call very very simple it is tough because now in the light of uh, new issue uh, guidelines we have to study this particular standard and it has already complicated the matters of a bit because earlier it was pretty easy but now it is quite tough because here we will have to deal not only with the home currency foreign currency besides that two new currencies which we will have to deal up with that is functional currency and of course the presentation currency regarding which we haven't had any what we call knowledge prior to what we call advent of this particular NDS. So that's the reason this particular NDS has become more formidable but because but before we start what we call going through the guidelines let me actually give you the complications which we may face. For example let us say there is an entity correct this there is an entity we further presume that entity E1 this entity operates in India correct there is an entity and it operates in India entity E1 operates in India that means it is located in India we further presume that during the current year this entity sells let us say uh, goods worth rupees goods worth dollar ten thousand dollar ten thousand to a to a customer in US to a customer in US United States of America obviously this is a foreign currency transaction all such transactions which are denominated in foreign currency are known as foreign currency transactions correct now the problem is that with respect to NAS 21 how to account for this particular transaction what I mean to say is how this transaction should be recorded let us say we sold the goods on 1st of April 22 on this date we sold the goods we further presume that on this particular date the exchange rate happens to be one dollar is equal to let us say rupees 70 correct one dollar is equal to rupees 70 now it is a foreign currency transaction because any what we call transaction which is denominated in foreign currency is considered as foreign currency transaction entity e1 is operating in India its home currency is rupees no doubt about that so any other currency will be considered as foreign currency at least keeping into guidelines the of the existing accounting standard AS 11 correct under AS 11 foreign currency means any currency which is other than the domestic currency or the home currency so because entity E1 is operating in India its home currency or domestic currency is rupees and all other currencies will be considered as foreign currency that is what we have studied studied in our what we call earlier phases of education now logically on 1 4 2021 this transaction should be recorded like this that is dollar 10,000 will be converted into the home currency dollar ten thousand into seventy as per AS eleven. That means we shall record this transaction at rupees seven lakh. Sales account debit. Sorry, foreign customer account debit to sales account. This would be my entry. Correct. I have sold the goods to a foreign customer. Foreign customer account debit, or simply you can write debtor's account debit if you do not want to write foreign customer to sales account. 
but this is as per AS11. You can see that as per existing accounting standard, recording of the foreign currency transaction is not a tedious matter. Correct? Simply, we will have to take the exchange rate on the date of the transaction and we will multiply it with what we call foreign currency transaction amount and we can get at what figure we need to represent it. So, entity E1, as far as is concerned, it will record this transaction. Initial recording will be done at rupees 7, 7 lakh, but this is as per AS11. Now, the problem is that we are dealing with what we call NDS21. Now, NDS21 talks something different. It says that the transaction will be recorded not at home currency, rather we will have to record this transaction on functional currency, on functional currency. That means if I am going to apply NDS21, if I am going to apply NDS21 to record this particular transaction, I cannot blindly what we call multiply $10,000 with what we call Indian currency rupees 70. First of all, I need to find out what is my functional currency. We'll talk about at great length. In fact, that is the main issue in this particular standard to decide your functional currency. How it is decided that I will let you know in a short while. It is a possibility, what I am trying to say, try to understand the crux and the problems and the complications of this particular standard first, then it will become a little bit easier for us to later on comprehend the other issues. Now, as far as foreign currency transaction is concerned, under NDS21, recording will not be done what we call in Indian currency. I am not telling it will not always be, but blindly we will not record it in Indian currency. First of all, we will see what exactly our functional currency. Our functional currency could be rupees, even as per India's 21. We will not use the word local currency, home currency or domestic currency. Transaction will be recorded at functional currency. Functional currency, how it is fine, that is a core issue and that we, we will take up later on because right now it is not possible to tell you what exactly the functional currency is. But I'm trying to tell you the what we call surficial idea of this particular standard. That means blindly I'm not going to multiply it with rupees 70. I will first of all take into account what is my functional currency. Then I will take the exchange rate of the functional currency and functional currency and the foreign currency and then I am going to actually record this particular transaction. Are you getting my point or not? So what exactly my functional currency at this moment is, it is difficult to find it out in the light of any further information but you need to understand the issue of first, correct? So once it is clear, what exactly is the complication of this particular standard? That mean here problem is that even though you are operating in India, you cannot blindly record this transaction in your home currency. This is the what we call problem and this is the major difference. Because earlier we used to deal up with only foreign currency and the domestic currency but now we have to deal up with many currencies like for functional currency, this is the new word, then presentation currency and of course the foreign currency, correct? So now we will start this particular what we call a standard after what we call getting a bird's eye view of what exactly is the problems which we are going to face in this particular standard, correct? So start along with me, point number one as I normally start off with. So, NDS 21 deals with deals with effects of deals with effects of changes effects of changes in foreign exchange rates changes in I'm going to use lots of abbreviations so Please pay attention because every time it is not possible and moreover it's a very lengthy standard. Foreign exchange rates, effects of changes in foreign exchange rates, so I will write here FER. This is the abbreviated form which I am going to use for foreign exchange rate, correct? Of course, this standard is applicable to any entity which is having foreign currency transaction. So, if an entity is not having any foreign currency transaction, this particular standard cannot be applied. It is as simple as that. This is my point number two. I write this standard. This standard is applicable. This standard is applicable. This standard is applicable to entities. 
that have foreign currency transaction now this is another word because so often i'm going to use lots of short form i'm using it with red pen foreign currency transaction once i will write in full foreign currency transactions foreign currency transactions now for this i will use fcts foreign currency transactions S, a small s i have written correct so this standard will apply to an entity which is having foreign currency transactions foreign currency transaction is a transactions which are expressed in foreign currency correct but okay i will take the next sheet because my first sheet is coming to an end this is my sheet number one because there are so many sheets lying down here as you know recording is being done from my home studio and not from my proper office studio so little bit on quality and technical issue matters you will have to bear with me for example when you record in your home there is possibility that however care you may exercise there might be some what we call zing sound problem and so but in spite of that as far as content is concerned we will not leave as i keep on saying what we call any efforts which are lacking correct so point number 3 now i am moving over to entities you will have to write along with me a lot today entities can have entities can have foreign currency transactions so entities can have foreign currency transaction i will use a scale correct entities can have foreign currency transaction directly or indirectly directly suppose your head office is in india so directly you can sell the goods in a foreign country correct that is what we mean by directly or indirectly indirectly means your head office is in india and you are having a branch let us say in some other country and obviously branch is selling the goods in other country that been in a different currency so indirectly so that been foreign currency transaction could be direct or indirect directly or indirectly that is through that is through its foreign branches its foreign branches or subsidiaries foreign branches or subsidiaries correct I have already taken apologies for any sort of what we call sound uh, problems. Reason is that is uh, I have been telling time and again. However, care you might take, but there is every possibility that some members, your wife or etc., son is playing down over there, or similarly, wife is watching TV, especially nowadays serial, especially the mythological serials are uh, very popular. This Corona times, and uh, that's the reason. Correct. So anyway. so and first thing you need to know regarding the foreign currency transaction foreign currency transactions can be directly or indirectly how you have seen it now we come over to the next point objective of the standard as usual so objective of the standard just for the sake of familiarity i will write objective of the standard objective of the standard is to prescribe is to prescribe is to prescribe how to how to record how to record foreign currency transactions and foreign operation as we will talk about it later on foreign operation because your head office let us say in a particular nation and you are have also having what we call a branch that is technically known as foreign operation so prescribe how to record foreign currency transaction and how to record foreign operations in the financial statements 
because I am using lots of short forms, so once again I will write in full financial statements. Financial statements and I will use FS for it. In the financial statements, correct, of an entity, of an entity, of an entity. And how to translate and how to translate how to translate financial statements this is another basic issue it is not sufficient that how to record the transaction i have given you already a clue that all the foreign currency transaction will be recorded in foreign currency but then how we are going to prepare the financial statement are the financial statement going to be prepared in what we call functional currency no we will see here and how to translate the financial statements into see here a new word is coming now into a presentation currency I have already told you it is not necessary that if you have recorded the transaction in the functional currency so it is not necessary that you will use the same currency to what we call present the financial it could be a possibility that you may have to use a presentation currency for the same presentation currency so these are the issues regarding which the guidelines are issued by this particular standard that then standard will tell us how to record the foreign currency transaction and of course our foreign operations and we will see later on that generally it is recorded by using the functional currency but then how to actually translate the financial statement into what we call presentation currency now so these are the things which we have to deal up with as far as this particular standard is concerned then then I will write the sheet number first then I will go over to the next points so the principal issues as we have already seen as such as such core issues as such core issues as such core issues can be surmised surmised means concluded shortened can be surmised as follows what or a foreign currency transactions fcts entered foreign currency transactions entered into by an entity so that means we will have to keep it keep a track of that that foreign currency transaction entered into by an entity and translation of financial statements translation that is very important translation of financial statements of foreign operation this is again the word which I am going to use a lot foreign operation generally foreign operation stands for foreign branches correct now this is standard then talks about what we call presentation currency this is standard then talks about as I said presentation currency right now I am not in a position to tell you how what exactly the presentation currency is and how we will decide that it will that a particular currency will be our presentation currency that I will let you know later on but right now I am simply writing that present presentation currency is the currency in which financial statements are presented is the currency in which 
financial statements are presented financial statements are presented correct so the currency which you which an entity would use to present its financial statement is known as presentation currency i have already told you how it is selected how it is arrived at that will be what we got discuss later on now we slowly and steadily coming over to the issues main issue first of all we need to have a good idea regarding the functional currency functional currency i talked in the beginning what is functional currency how it is determined that is the basic what we call issue in this particular standard once you become deft in it half the battle is won correct functional currency let me write a way bit first then you will be able to understand better functional currency is the currency functional currency is the currency of the primary economic environment this is the word which we are going to use a lot i am going to use red pen primary standard uses many new words very difficult to keep track of sometime primary economic environment primary economic environment obviously i am going to use a short form pee -E. correct primary economic environment so is the currency of the primary economic environment in which entity operates in which entity operates what does it mean you will come to know about it very very shortly so let me actually first move further that mean first of all we need to understand primary economic environment isn't it primary economic environment the standard has said the primary economic environment is one in which the entity generates and what we call expends the cash so primary economic environment is one in which an entity in which an entity generates generates revenues and expend expend means to spend and expend cash that mean in which you not only generate revenue but in order to generate the revenue you will have to do spending also that is what we call primary economic environment so if your entity is operating in an environment correct in an environment uh, let us say what we call your entity is dealing mostly uh in us dollars that mean what i mean to say is that suppose you are an indian entity number one but your sales are expressed in what we call a us dollars only your expenses are expressed in us dollars so in that case we may say that primary economic environment is your us dollars correct so functional currency and the currency us dollar will become your functional currency functional currency is the currency of the primary economic environment in which the entity operates what is primary economic environment primary economic environment is one in which you what we call generate revenue and spend cash but this is not enough to understand so when we will have to dig deep correct i will keep the sheet here and this is sheet number 3 so first of all how primary economic environment is assessed unless and until we are in a position to assess the primary economic environment whether we are what we call operating in this environment or not we won't be in a position to actually find out our functional currency so that's the reason point number 9 in 
I have written last time 8, so it is 9. So, indicators of functional currency. What are the indicators? These are the clues which will help you in deciding your functional currency. Indicators of functional currency. Now, see, this is the word which I am going to use all lots of time during the course of what we call this particular standard. So, I will use a short form functional currency. I will not use the short form FC because FC generally stands for foreign currency. We are talking about functional currency. So, I will use like this FNC correct this is functional currency so that you understand it better indicators of functional currency there are two broad indicators one is known as a primary indicators primary indicators primary indicators mean main indicators what are those one, the currency, the currency which influences, the currency which influences selling price, which influences selling price of goods and services goods and services that is sales that is sales so if the currency is influencing your selling price correct if the currency is influencing your selling price, then that currency will be considered as your functional currency. But there are other indicators also, correct? Then we talk about the next point, that is sales. Uh, I was, I didn't complete the sentence. The currency which influences selling price of the goods and services, that is sales, are mostly denominated denominated in in this currency so then we would say that this currency is F is what we call have influencing our selling price second currency of the country currency of the country currency of the country whose market forces market forces and regulations are responsible in determining selling price determining selling price currency of the country whose market forces and regulations are responsible in determining selling price. Now suppose there is an entity which is operating in Saudi Arabia, correct? And it produces of course what we call oil and of course exports it. And let us say 60% or 70% of its total exports are to US. That means it is the demand and supply forces of US which will affect it most in determining its supply forces because majority of its export is to US. Are you getting my point or not? 
so it could be currency of the country whose market forces and regulations are responsible in determining the selling price don't worry about it i have i will do lots of case studies later on but at this moment because we are writing we have to talk a bit about that also third currency these are indicators remember one thing currency which influences which influences labor cost labor material labor material and other cost and other cost of providing of providing goods and services goods and services so currency could be your functional currency if the labor material and cost of providing of the goods and services correct it is influencing your cost of labor material and of course your manufacturing cost these are the main indicators now sometime what happens actually we are not in a position to use the primary indicators because it could be a possibility that our sales are being affected by a particular currency our cost is being what we call affected by a particular currency so sometime it becomes a little bit difficult for us to actually assess the primary conditions so in that particular case we may go for some additional conditions also known as secondary conditions so secondary indicators secondary indicators secondary indicators also known as additional factors additional factors so if primary indicators are quite clumsy and we are not in a position to arrive over a particular concrete conclusion in that particular case we shall have to move over to secondary indicators as i said a moment ago so primary in order to assess the additional factors we will check that which is the currency which is what we call affecting our financial activities currency in which financing activities financing activities take place what does it mean suppose there is an entity and it failed to arrive over any particular conclusion even after going through what we call all the indicators primary indicators then this entity then this entity what it will do it will go for the additional factors now it will check whether which is the currency which is affecting its financial activities for example suppose today if we are going to issue debts so in which currency will affect us correct so currency in which financing activities take place for for example issue of debts or equity issue of debts or equity or equity correct then other additional factor is there like currency in which receipts or from operating activities from operating activities are received 
So these are additional factors. Additional factor may be utilized when we fail to actually get any conclusive what we call idea even after going through the primary indicators as I said. Correct. So now after having gone through the indicators, I am very sure that no one among you have been able to understand how to use it. The point is that. So for that, it is difficult. No doubt. I also understand that it is not easy to assimilate after just making a reading out of it. So that is the reason we are going to actually help you a lot by taking lots of case study. Now you will be able to understand quite easily. First I pick up a case study. Uh, okay, I think this case study I will be able to present here. Case study. Okay, I will write case study 1. Correct. In this case study, just wait. Let us say there is an entity by the name of F1 Limited. And this entity we further presume is located in India. Correct. As usual, what I do then, I draw a line. Now, this entity F1 Limited manufactures some product, let us say, manufactures product, manufactures product, we further presume that its sales are denominated in spite of the fact that it is operating in India. Its sales are denominated in Indian rupees. Sales are denominated in INR, Indian National Rupee, that in rupees. Further, let us say the product prices, let me write first. Product prices, product prices affected by, affected by market forces, or regulations of India, government regulations of India. Now, what will be its functional currency? Suppose if I ask, what's the functional currency in that case, in this case? It is pretty easy to answer, so I'm not going to actually ask this question of you, correct? So, this is your response. Sales are being, sales are being denominated in INR, that is Indian National Rupee. Selling price are being determined or are being regulated by market forces by market forces and regulations regulations of India. Correct? So, we may say all primary indicators are being satisfied. So, functional currency will be rupee. Since primary
indicators since primary indicators are being satisfied as such i n r or rupees is the functional currency so even though you are operating in india that doesn't mean that the indian rupee cannot be your functional currency it can be functional currency provided you are what we call operating in an environment where you, this becomes your major currency correct we pick up another case study we will pick up lots of case study unless and until i feel that you have become thorough with it case study 2 in this case study i write let us say there is an entity by the name of f2 f2 limited is engaged in f2 limited is engaged in extraction extraction of oil correct in uae united arab emirates correct so it is engaged in extraction of oil and as we know that the currency of uae i think is dirham if i am not wrong d u r h a m i am not very sure about the spelling but anyway whatever the currency is we presume dirham is the currency of uae correct now i put up a line without that i cannot frame a case study that is the only problem we further presume that its sales are denominated in local currency of usa sales are denominated sales are denominated in local currency local currency of usa that is dollars us dollars correct then let us say selling prices sp selling prices are affected selling prices are affected by global demand and supply by global demand supply forces however however us usa united states of america accounts for 50% of its global demand that mean majority of the exports are to usa correct global demand just to stress the question a little bit i also give you 90% of entities cost 90% of entities cost are staff salaries hired from abroad hired 
from abroad hired from abroad Ninety percent of entities' cost or staff salaries hired from abroad, uh, and and a machinery, a machinery imported. from usa so 90% of its total cost comprises of you can say salaries to staff and acquisition of a machinery now staff salaries we do not know actually staff salary to whom uh, how they are paying in which currency they are paying but what we know is that they have hired a machinery also from uh, what we call usa correct and uh, further other 10% of the cost other 10% of the cost is denominated in dirham or dirham whatever you may call it now what is the functional currency in this case so it is not very difficult to find out the functional currency at least clearly it is being said that sales are denominated in local currency and selling price of the entity is actually almost determined by usa because usa is accounting for 50% correct that mean majority of the sales selling price is influenced by what we call us dollar so these two primary conditions are getting satisfied of course as far as its cost is concerned we can say that is not particularly in a particular currency that is mixed but two major primary indicators are satisfied so entity can consider us dollar as its what we call functional currency that is how your your answer will be so as far as response is concerned you will write it this way response sales are denominated are denominated in usa currency or us dollar USA currency that is dollar and also and also selling price of output selling price of output of the entity of the entity is being determined mainly by usa because usa is accounting for 50% however cost of the entity is mixed however cost of entity cost of staff salary machinery and other cost are mixed cost is mixed as such as such us dollar can be considered can be considered as 
functional currency f and c i will use the term functional currency as as two primary indicators two primary indicators two primary indicators are being satisfied are being satisfied i will write it here itself i don't want to change the sheet at this moment so this is how and you will definitely get a question uh, to determine the functional currency this is how you will have to put it over there is it clear to you this was our case study 2 and now we we'll pick up another case study as you know we do lots of case study that is the only problem case study 5 this was sheet number i have forgotten to write the sheet number this was 4 this is 5 now case study which one third okay in this case study i write there is an entity f3 correct we further presume that this particular entity is based in uk united kingdom not usa and currency of united kingdom each one of us is aware of it is pounds and that is denominated i think like this correct it, so f3 is based in uk for exports to usa for exports to usa f3 is an entity which is based in uk united kingdom but but it is exporting the goods basically meant to export goods to usa some further information is at your disposal uh, let us say selling prices are denominated selling prices are denominated in dollars Further selling prices are based on prices on prices set by demand supply forces. in US that means the selling prices are basically settled by the forces of USA demand supply forces of USA customers customers settle in USA that means most of its exports are to USA so that is why settle in USA okay instead of writing AI wrote in dollars anyway customers are settled in USA correct then then I write entity holds entity holds its excess cash its excess cash in US dollars so whatever surplus cash the entity has it holds it in US dollar correct then I write costs are met by 
converting by converting dollars into pounds and let us say borrowings borrowings are from USA from USA specialized machinery pretty long paste specialized machinery just to tilt you Spe specialized machinery purchased from Russia purchased from Russia such costs such costs that mean this machinery such costs are not significant correct so how will you decide in this case the functional currency correct of course it looks like US dollar no doubt about that because everything is being done in US dollar so you, your answer will be like this if you want me to write selling you can start selling price demand selling price is determined by demand and supply forces operating in USA costs problem is that costs are being met in pounds that is the problem that is the problem see here I will write the answer this way demand supply forces demand supply of US uh, are influencing are influencing selling prices correct But costs are being met not in dollars because dollars are converted into pounds are being met in pounds. Although we are having a machinery from Russia but it is not important. Economic forces of Russia are not important. Economic forces of Russia are not material. That being, even after assessing the primary indicators, initially it was appearing a very simple case study, but turning out to be complicated because so far we cannot say with concreteness that which currency sh we should take as what we call functional currency correct because cost also is very very important so we will have to apply the additional factors so additional factor when we apply what we find additional factors uh, additional factors states Financing is from USA because borrowings are from USA it is to be given. So financing is from USA. We are borrowing the funds from USA and also we are holding the cash, surplus cash in US dollars. That is why US dollar will be functional currency surplus is held in US dollars correct thus 
entity should consider dollar as its functional currency f and c is it clear to you interesting very interesting isn't it or not we'll continue it with in the next session